what's up guys this is Ray and welcome to Asian Filmist and this is the first video of July so that means we're going to be changing up the themes of uh, movie reviews that I upload to the channel and for the month of July I chose video game adaptations and as you can tell by the title of this video the first video game adaptation I'm going to review for you guys is Fatal Frame. Fatal Frame is a Japanese movie released in 2014. This movie was directed by Asato Mari and it stars Nakajo Ayami and Morikawa Aoi. The story of Fatal Frame I think it differs a whole lot from its original source material. The the Fatal Frame games were excellent. They're some of the scariest survival horror games out there. It's they're definitely games you have to play. It's always you know they're just a whole lot of fun, especially when you compare them to uh, to Resident Evil or Silent Hill or any of the other popular survival horror games. But the movie it's a bit different in a whole lot of ways. Oh uh, well. First of all, the story, it's a, it takes place in an all-girls Catholic, Catholic high school. And there's rumors about a curse that, uh, that afflicts uh, only girls. And the way you get afflicted by this curse is that uh, at the stroke of midnight, exactly the stroke of midnight, you kiss a photo of the person you are in love with. And the person that everyone happens to be in love with at this school is, well, the most popular girl in school, Aya. And for some reason, uh, every time a girl kisses her photo on the lips at midnight, uh, sooner or later that girl ends up missing. And it's also rumored that although Aya, she's not exactly a ghost, she is kind of stuck in her room and is a big recluse and no one has seen her for a long while. So I think just from that description alone, you kind of have uh, a basic or general J-horror story. Uh, it's, it doesn't really have anything unique sounding about it all, but you know, going into detail, the positives, the first of all, the positives that I have to say about this movie, you know, I love the music and I like the atmosphere. I thought the music uh, did very well in creating a very spooky, a very eerie atmosphere. You not only had uh, symphonic sounds, you also had a lot of uh, upper opera sounding music, a lot of uh, voices that you would normally associate coming from a choir. After all, this story does take place in a, in a Catholic high school. And the way, uh, the way the music is used, it did well in setting the tone to really set a very creepy and eerie atmosphere. And you know, like I said, the atmosphere is really well done. It has a, it's a good old fashioned ghost story. And what I like about this ghost story is that it doesn't go for your typical jump scares. Instead, it opts to have more long and slow low burns and you know I think uh, you definitely feel them you know the, these long burns they're kind of creepy uh, and they can you know if you're not very uh, familiar with with ghost stories I feel like many moments in this movie can give you goosebumps like many of these scenes are you know characters going about their way and in the background you might see something weird something kind of off and it may very well be the ghost kind of creeping towards the character that's depicted on screen and you know and the, it catches the character's attention and then you kind of see the ghost slowly move towards the camera and it's a different kind of way to to be scary and from a storytelling point of view something that I thought was rather interesting I'm not sure if I like it or not but I just thought it was interesting to say the least is that you know in the very beginning there's no real clear main character a lot of times these these uh, these horror movies you have a singular main character and everything kind of revolves around them but in here you start off with the main character and then the the spotlight of the lead character kind of bounces back and forth between different girls and uh, you don't get a sense of uh, the true main character until about halfway through the movie maybe a little bit earlier than that but what I like about this choice is that uh, it shows that the curse doesn't center along one center around one good guy uh, it afflicts many people there's many people involved now as far as the negatives are concerned I feel I have a lot more negative to say then the positives, first of all, you know, as I said earlier that while the music and the atmosphere were great, I feel for me as someone who is a huge fan of horror movies, this movie wasn't actually scary per se. It didn't freak me out at all. Although I can kind of appreciate the, the decisions it made to, to, to structure itself as a really good creepy movie. But for me personally, I didn't find it scary at all. And it, for me, it was definitely a lot slower in tempo than I would have preferred. And it was so slow to the point that it actually felt more like an indie art house movie. You know, I don't know if that's a negative or positive 
positive. It depends, I guess, on who you ask. But for me, I could have done with a more kind of energetic, scary kind of horror movie, but that wasn't what this film was all about. But despite all that, it dove into a lot of familiar J-horror territory, and that involves uh, a girl who's at the center of the the scary story, a curse, and also a mystery and how to and how to uh, how to alleviate the curse and uh, do and undo everything that has been done. And throughout the story, there are a number of characters that get introduced into the plot. As with seemingly no connection to the main story at all, but they get introduced and they have some involvement in a few scenes here and there. But afterwards, they just disappear, never to be heard from again. And you're you're left wondering, you know, why was this character introduced in the film in the in the first place? I mean, one character off the top of my head that fits that bill is this uh, this shaman, I think he was, who helped interpret the voice of a cursed girl. Uh, and also his assistant, you know, they get brought in thinking, you know, you think that they're going to be some kind of really cool supporting character to help take down the evil spirit. But no, after their scene where they interpret uh, the voice of this uh, cursed girl, they you, you never hear from them again as far. Yeah, I don't remember hearing from them after that scene. And it was, it was just kind of strange and kind of awkward. And for many of the characters that get introduced, there isn't a big payoff at all. They just kind of get left hanging with a lot of loose threads in the story. And you're wondering, you know, why, what was the point of the character? You know, they, a lot of these characters have interesting connections to the story, but they never fully dive into it. Instead, I feel they, the reason why they, their, their stories get left hanging because they want is because uh, they want you to interpret it for yourself as far as like how these characters tie into the bigger picture. But I thought that that kind of step wasn't was wasn't necessarily needed, and overall, it just threw everything off. But I think the biggest gripe I have to say about Fail of Frame is that you know the camera obscura, which was a huge thing in the games, it was barely used at all in the movie. Now, what the camera obscura is, you know, in the in the video games, it was your weapon. It was uh you, you know it was your weapon against the ghost. Uh, the way the go the game is played is that uh, you would go through these haunted areas, you know haunted houses, haunted neighborhoods, and then it, these areas would be inhabited by uh, aggressive ghosts. And the way you defeat these ghosts is you look into your viewfinder of the camera obscura, and then you snap pictures. And then so the closer you get to these ghosts, and uh, the the closer the photo the sub the closer the ghost is from the camera, the more damage it did. And also the, uh, the type of film you load into the camera would affect that damage. And it was, it, it gave a whole different sense of horror that made the games interesting. But the camera obscura was not used to that extent at all in the movie. Rather, it was used as a tool of exposition, meaning that it helped explain some of the events and some of the story elements, but it was never used as a weapon or uh, even a means of defense against any of the ghosts. And to me, that was the biggest disappointment. I mean, going back to what I said about some of the characters not really having a big payoff, there, the the boy who owns the camera obscura, you get introduced to him as a kid who gets bullied, but you know, and he gets uh, he gets his photo album thrown around, he gets harassed by some older kids. But then that was it. It's like they never go back into it and explain why he was bullied, or they they don't really explain. They don't really go and try to uh, resolve that story arc. It's just like, yeah, here's a kid. He's bullied. He has a he has a camera obscura, and, and that's it. But overall, what did I think of Fatal Frame? You know, it's okay. I mean, like, it's not it's not the worst video game adaptation. It's also not the best at all. I wouldn't call this movie. A very good or even satisfactory video game adaptation because I feel like uh, as an adaptation it veers very far from the original source material it has elements and Easter eggs that you know you can see that uh, are from the source material but I don't think it adapts the source material well at all but you know this movie had some interesting themes like uh, same-sex love which is which isn't normally a theme much explored in Japanese cinema and you know you had the female the, the main female protagonist as you would in the games but 
in the end, it just didn't pack a strong enough punch. And you know, in the end, I feel like Fail of Frame was just a very familiar J-horror story and not as unique as the video games that it adapted. And I don't think I would recommend this movie because I feel it would put the average viewer to sleep. I and mean, that's just me being honest. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Fail of Frame. What did you guys think? What kind of questions did you guys have? Let me know in the comment section below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And by all means, please support Agent Films through Patreon. It helps the channel a lot. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you all again in the next video. Take it easy.